All right, uh, so nice to have you on News Hub. I'm sure you're expecting for us to start talking about the next Niger CEO. We still would. However, let's talk about the World's Teachers Day 2021. Uh, the World's Teachers Day 2021 is, is one day that many people may not really you know, pay attention to. And you ask why, because I ask questions. They're like, okay, what's Teachers Day? No problem. But when you look at teachers and you look at the world, there's no one, no matter how highly placed you are, that wasn't taught by a teacher. And so we have to celebrate our teachers all over the world. So you can share with us who your favorite teachers <laughs> or your teacher was back or right now. And let's celebrate them also today on the program. Uh, absolutely. And uh, it's a big discussion we're going to be having um, around, uh, around today's uh, World Teachers Day. And, um, what, what gets to my mind, or, or, together with the theme for this year's uh, event, is um, the, the pathway uh, towards education. And uh, something Dr. Roberts talked about, the, the fact that there are large areas, suites of um, land in this country where you don't have um, access to health care, you don't have access to education, the millions of children are out of school. I think many times people even forget that if we want to get those children back into school, those 10 point, how many million children? Where are the teachers going to be recruited to train those children? Hmm. <laughs> you know? Uh, so we just say, get them into the school, get them, which was the problem of the Minister of Education, Adamo Adamu had the other time when he said during the middle of COVID, he said that the number had moved from 10.4 million to 6 million. He told journalists there that you made a mistake. We're now 6.4 million children out of school. And we said, hmm. where's the evidence? This was COVID-19. Show us the evidence that while COVID was on, you had schools being built, evidence one, you had Teachers being employed to teach the four point something million. There was no evidence, and up to we're waiting for the evidence to show and okay. suggest I, that. I, so, I just can't imagine. Yeah. And in case you wonder, UNESCO is not just all calling on us to celebrate our teachers today. Uh, the body is also calling on all countries across the world to invest in the teachers and prioritize them in global education recovery efforts, as well as um, grant them access to things that will make them function at the optimum. So we'll be taking a look at that also on the program today. Right. I think we have, um, uh, all right, I'm, I'm not too sure whether we all have right. our resource person in yet. Um. All right. We have our resource jo persons joining us in just a oh, moment. Okay. okay. We have our resource person right there uh, joining us uh, via Zoom. She actually is Dr. B.C. Ishuru Sho former special advisor on education to your state government. Uh, Dr. Bisa it's so nice to have you on News Hub today. Good morning. So All nice right. to be here. All right. Maybe within a minute or two, share me your best teacher's uh, story, perhaps. A teacher that stands out for you. When you think about education, a very special teacher. Thank you. I have lots of them. In fact, I am... Um, um, in touch with my principal <clears throat> until he died. He died a few months ago at the age of 88. I, what struck me with Baba Ido is the way he speaks. You know, his diction. He taught me to speak good English. You know, and um, I have another teacher, I have the principal of my school when I was at the Federal School of Arts and Science, Victoria Island. Doc, um, Mr. Oshalukoya. Mr. Oshalukoya is another great uh, teacher for us. We used to call him Action Man because he goes about the school with his um, with, 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 with his um, um, uh, he, 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 he has a, a, something that he uses to flog us. You know, a cane. You know, and when Oshal Lukoya comes into the classroom, everybody will be quiet. Sometimes the principal may come in through the window. It will just jump into the classroom because we had lots of um, uh, trancy. We were playing lots of trancy then at the Federal School of Arts and Science. We call it FSS then in um, Lagos. I, I have a lot of wonderful teachers. I'm a teacher's girl and it's no uh, it's not by uh, accident that I become a teacher myself. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fa fantastic story. And I'm sure the millions of people who are watching have also uh, their favorite teacher uh, story also too. 
Well, well, the challenges uh, Dr. Shiro Shiro facing uh, the country's education sector, if you stay with the teachers, is massive, it's huge. And um, if you go to a typical public school, beginning from how many, teach, how many pupils you have to a teacher, you often ask yourself the question uh, whether, first and foremost, the teacher is equipped to handle those number of children uh, before you even talk of being uh, uh, motivated. W what, is, what is the state of a teacher in a public institution in this country? From what you've seen, is it better? Or you think uh, we still have a long way to go? We have a long way to go. We lack qualified teachers. Our teachers have, uh, they lack the capacity to deliver cutting edge education in the 21st century. And we know that the teacher's quality is proving to be the single most important feature of successful education systems. So the most efficient schools that we have in history are those that have invested a great deal of effort to get the staffing, staffing structures right, recruiting the right people, and ensuring that they are continually supported to improve. So that is the question. We need to continually you know, ensure that our teachers are supported to improve. In Nigeria, Hardly do we have that. We do not have a system whereby teachers continue to get retrained, reskilled, and upskilled. You know, and we don't have a system where teachers are supported or even rewarded, you know, properly. Teachers are looked down upon. So there's a lot of um, room for improvement to ensure that our teacher. Uh, can take on the challenges of the 21st century um, education system. Improving the quality of teaching is pertinent to meeting the sustainable development goal for. So um, what are we waiting for? We need to be talking to our policymakers to review and rethink and reimagine um, teacher training to start with, we need to reimagine teacher training and ensure that in the curriculum, in the scheme of work, we put in it the cutting edge solutions like technology, um, critical thinking skills, and also how do we uh, make education relevant to the society? These are the areas that we need to develop our teachers on. If you go to any public schools now, you find out that the majority of the teachers are well, they, they, they have the requisite um, um, qualifications, but they do not, they have not, majority of them have not retrained. Majority of them have not gone to any effective um, capacity building workshop since they started teaching. And some of them may be teaching for over 10 years. and. 20 years and they're still using the same skills that they gained you know that long time ago to teach and education has moved on education does not stay still education keeps moving so a good teacher must continue to learn so that they will not be rusty in nigeria majority of our teachers are rusty and majority of our teachers in public schools are afraid of digital um literacy majority of them don't have digital literacy so some of them don't even have uh, um, simple computing skills so we have a long way to go like you said you know when it comes to getting our our teachers up to par in the classroom i remember that Hello? when each time that we talked about uh, before now we talked about quality of education in the country uh, my mom would say ah in our own days the modern three the standard six the standard everything and when you take a look at the quality of the education that these uh, uh, you know our parents perhaps grandparents had those days in comparison to what we have today you, you begin to ask questions uh, 
but maybe so the question would be uh what about the quality of teachers that we have right now is it about the quality of teachers is it about the policies that have been put in place for the education sector to really improve and uh, what about those challenges what, what 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 do you see um i remember in the olden days if you have standard six that's primary six education you will be so um um competent enough to even work in the bank. Majority of the bank tellers only have standard six during our father's days. So you can imagine the standard of education is there. But over the over time, it has been watered down. You know, the standard of education has fallen significantly. Some of our teachers, I'm, I'm sorry, cannot even speak proper English in, in, in the classroom. So where do we go wrong i think where we go went wrong is uh, in the um way that our tertiary education is um is structured you can go through education in this country i mean in nigeria whereby the education itself will not go through you you will not pass through the institution but you will just go through the education system Education is majorly road like learning, whereby people just cram and regurgitated what they have crammed, you know, in the classroom instead of um, teaching to know. Education really should be teaching to know. And um, you need to demonstrate um, your knowledge in examination. But in Nigeria, majority of, uh, of don't, let, don't let me say majority, but, but People do go through university bribing their ways. People do go through university, you know, buying marks, uh, paying for, for marks, and even uh, some may even befriend um, the, um, um, uh, their lecturers to get marks. There are so many flaws in education. There, there are so many uh, fraudulent activities going on in the educational sector. We, we have people, you know, paying for people for for other people to go and sit exams for them. There are so many things, and I believe that that is the problem in our education. Uh, in, in, in that is carried over into education because at the end of the day, just like any other part of the industry, the education sector is also a receiver of the education products that we have in the country. And if we are not doing, um, we're not doing our best, we're not looking into ensuring that we deliver um, awesome tertiary um, educational um, provision in the country, we will continue to have a decline in education. That's one. Another one is another issue that brought us here is the issue of the initial teacher training curriculum, the syllabus. What is in the syllabus? Like I mentioned the other time, a friend of mine whose daughter is studying education, you know, now, studied education 30 something years ago in the same university. And she was very appalled when her daughter came home and was still learning the same thing she learned 30 years ago, you know education exactly the same note basically you know nothing has been added to it that is very very sad and you can see what i'm talking about when i say that the initial teacher training curriculum needs to be upgraded we need to look into that you know but like many other good things in nigeria there is a lot of bureaucracy in getting to do these things. And that's the reason why I always talk. I always talk to, to the state because uh, the, the um, jurisdiction for education lies greatly in the state. And the state can, we can, we can achieve the best education one state at a time in Nigeria. If we are uh, the political will at the state level. Thank you.
you schooled here, you taught here, and you are now in England. What's the difference between teachers and the way that the curriculum works over there and the way that you knew, the way it worked here when you were in the country? Thank you. Um, I actually trained in the UK to become a teacher. I did not train in Nigeria to be a teacher. So I am well averse, I'm, I'm, you know, with the system here. The system here is very close to the industry. When I say the industry, you know, we have industrial um, leaders, you know, captains of industries who are part of the learning uh, committee that design the curriculum of every course. For example, if you are an engineer, you know, um, the captains of industry in engineering will be part of decision maker when it comes to curriculum. They are the people that we inform the curriculum. They are the people that we, that we um, um, collaborate with institutions, with universities, and let them know the skills that they need in the industry. And that is how education evolves. And also, um, teachers in the UK, for example, get retrained every six weeks. Every six weeks, teachers get into the classroom. And that is what we call INSET. INSET is in-service education training, which happens every six weeks. Education is designed in a way that teachers can take a break every six weeks. And that's why we have the after. They call it midterm in Nigeria. We call it half term here. The half term in Nigeria is just one day or two days. It's not enough. In the UK and any other developed part of the world, half term is one week. It's a one week break. During that one week break, two days will be for insects, where the teachers go back into the classroom and get upskilled. They get updated. They are briefed about the important um, priorities in education. Because education is all about priorities. We have the factual parts of education and we have the changing parts of education that needs to change with what society needs. And that is what teachers need to get updated in every six weeks. And then after six weeks, because each term is divided into six weeks, six blocks of weeks, you know, because each term is 12 weeks. So you do 12 or 13 weeks. The first term is slightly longer. It's about 14 weeks. The first term is about 14 weeks. So after this first seven weeks in the first term, schools go on break for one week. It gives the teacher the time to, to recover from the burnout because teaching is a very intense activity. Teaching is a very intense activity if done properly. It consumes you. You've got to prepare for your lessons. You've got to mark the books and you've got to also pay attention to pastoral care in the classroom. You need to observe your, your kids. You need to move around to ensure that they are fully engaged and they're learning. So by the time you finish, and in, in the UK, we also have what we call the daily rotors. The daily rotors means that in addition to teaching, you have the specific part of the school environment that you monitor as a teacher. Because we don't leave the school unattended. We don't leave children unattended anywhere in secondary and primary school. And they don't have free periods like we have in Nigeria. I don't know what free periods mean because there's no young people that you live alone that will do anything productive. No, no young children will do anything productive if left alone. So the notion of free period is it's, it's where we have started setting our pupils wrong. So at the end of the day, the teaching um, experience, very intense. So teachers need to unwind. They need time to recover, to recover from the burnout and also to recharge. They need to recharge. And recharging means 
going back into the classroom to learn. They need time to read the um, industry guidelines, to read the magazine, newsletter, news bulletin, memos, um, uh, symposium, so many things to update their knowledge. And that's the reason why after should be one week, not one day or two days like we do have in Nigeria. So that is that is the comparative right. Um, right. Um, activities in teaching and learning right. in the UK. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. B.C. Shuro. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. Never enough time and this rolling discussion. We hope that the Nigeria Education Research and Development uh, Council, which is the body responsible for the uh, the tweaking of the content education curriculum is listening and listening very well that uh, this is outdated or like uh, a boss will tell me antediluvian and we have to rework this uh, educational system in the way which meets uh, today's reality but thank you very much uh, always a pleasure speaking with you thank you and have a great day and you too thank you thank you uh, dr bc shurosho former special advisor to the governor of uh, or your state. We're going to go on a quick break. When we come back, uh, Nigeria's next chief executive officer, hot and steaming. We are having a countdown already to the next general election. And um, sooner rather than later, we need to start to talk about exactly what we expect in Nigeria's next uh, CEO. Please stay with us on News Hub.